<laughs> and first of all, so you know, Mark Collier is a COO at the foundation, Hi, and everybody. I'm Lauren Sell, uh, marketing at the foundation. And then down here is Margie Callard, who joined us about a month and a half ago in marketing. Uh, she actually came from Internap, so she's seen the OpenStack community for a while, and we're happy to have her. And where's Claire? <laughs> Here's Claire Massey, and she joined us. How much in, wine do you have, Claire? Oh, <laughs> she joined us in December uh, at the foundation, also in marketing, and she's been working really hard on this summit. So thanks to Claire for everything she's been doing. Uh, it's been a lot of work. <laughs> uh, and then over here we have uh, Kathy Cacciatore, and probably a lot of you have been working with her. She is helping us out on industry events and sponsorships and also uh, coordinating some of the global events that we do. So have a great team. Uh, we're missing Todd Morey here, who's the man behind the brand too. Um, I don't know if you guys have worked with him, but he might be in here in just a little bit. But that is our team. And uh, just a little bit for today, I really don't have a lot of slides, but really the intent was to get everyone together. Um, we've been working on a new marketing portal that we want to share. It's just in staging right now, but want to show what we're, what we're thinking and get your feedback on that and then um, share a couple of plans. And mostly just want to make sure everyone here is plugged into the different marketing channels that we have. We do uh, monthly open marketing meetings for everyone in the community. We have a marketing mailing list uh, that you can get plugged into, but really want to find out how we can better work together. Um, you know, our foundation team is working on creating this core layer of materials that hopefully all of you can leverage, but you know, we also want to get feedback from you because you guys are, are working with customers and, and you know what people are talking about and what we need to be um, better messaging towards and what we need to be building materials around. So, and How many here have dialed into one of those monthly marketing meetings? Anyone? Oh, quite a few. Cool. Hopefully all of y'all will uh, sign up to the mailing list and, and start joining those. Good deal. So I guess I'll, I'll dive right into the marketing portal. So uh, I actually should just really pull it up. But basically, I mean, one, one of the biggest things that we do at the foundation, and some of y'all have probably asked us for this, is um, you know, give out the latest collateral or graphics that you need for, for whatever slides or deck that you're building, or how can you use the OpenStack logo in different ways, or, or what kind of materials do you need access to? So we're trying to make that a much better process um, and have it all online and, and easy for you guys to download. Um, and also just make sure that we always, you know, all have access to the latest materials. Um, obviously, OpenStack is moving very quickly. <laughs> um, you know, from a marketing perspective, it's pretty difficult to to keep up with that as well. So, um, so you know, we always are working on on new materials. So let me pull it up really fast so you guys can see what we are looking at, and then I'd love to just get some some feedback on it. Banter, banter. Um, yeah, so the, the portal is really, like, like Lauren said, just a place you can go. So there's one, one website you can go and, and get the latest materials. And we've done things with Dropbox and other sort of you know, shortcut tools, but this is going to be a lot more organized and something we'll, we'll always be, be updating. Is that good banter? That's true. Um, so basically, and this is you know, version one. We have a lot more ideas of what we want to build into it, but uh, but again, want to get your feedback of where we go from here. Because really, at this point, it's us posting these different materials and you being able to download them. And you know, eventually, we'd like to um, be able to get more feedback on the materials and also be able to even collaborate on some of these things that we're working on. Um, but up top, it's really more information. We're trying to make it pretty immediately obvious where you can go for help, whether you have a product launch and you need help uh, you know, knowing which commercial logo to use or what kind of messaging you can uh, you can use with your product launch, whether you're doing some PR and want support from the foundation, whether it's a quote or to use some of our media and analyst relationships to help be another distribution channel for your news. Um, also, along the same lines, customer case studies. We're always looking to help promote those and get them plugged into our different marketing channels. So the up top, all of these, and unfortunately I can't click through to the different pages right now, but um, our different pages just with more information about how to do that. Um, and then we have different graphics here. So uh, probably this software diagram over here is the one I get asked for the most, um, but just a way that, that everyone can have access to the latest graphics and, uh, and diagrams. Has and everyone seen this before, that graphic? It's pretty popular. Yes, it is a Todd Morey special. Um, and then we have different banner graphics. And actually, I think um, 
Martin developed this one for uh, one of his events in, in Hungary, right? And, uh, and we've been using it for other Martins here. He, he helps organize a local user group in, in Hungary. Or, and anyway, so, uh, so he, he developed that. And this is just a great example of he sent it to us, and we were able to use it for other events and modify it a little bit, and we've distributed it out to other people to use as well. So you know, that's how we really want to encourage the, the marketing process overall. Uh, yeah. So we have, we have, of course, the graphics, and then we have um, different presentations and collateral that we've been working on. And we are, you know, we have a lot of plans this year to continue to build out that content. Uh, and that's definitely an area where we want more feedback, um, whether it's, uh, you know, industry vertical specific, whether it's use case specific, whether we're getting more into, you know, the business level. It's definitely been evolving over time. When we started this two and a half years ago, it was really about getting developers on board and getting companies on board. Now we're definitely messaging more, more to end users and want to help you message to your customers as well. Uh, and then finally, uh, events materials. And some of this, like when, um, when Kathy's coordinating with different, I guess, you know, regional one-day OpenStack events or even helping to organize OpenStack presence at different industry events, she develops a lot of materials around that, whether it's you know, sponsorship prospectus or, or boost staffing diagram and things like that, that you can take advantage of and leverage, but also just some other graphics and materials that you might need to promote OpenStack at, at different events. And of course, um, over on the right side, we have links to, to different case studies. So um, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with the user stories page, but we've made a lot of progress on building out quite a few case studies on this page. and are looking to, to update it and, and redesign it too in the next Help couple of months. Help us find all of your cool users out there. <laughs> because these these are really, the, I mean, if you look around the summit, you'll notice that this, a lot of the sessions are packed, but the ones that are users talking about what they're doing with OpenStack are by far the most popular. People love that information, and it inspires more people to adopt OpenStack. So if there's one thing we always want more help with is identifying users that are willing to, to talk. and we. We can do a lot of the work with the writers that we have, you know, um, freelancers and stuff to produce the produce it. So it's not a lot of work for the users, but if you can send them to us, we can put a lot more up. So that's kind of the uh, the overview of what we're building and launching pretty soon. Um, this is just in staging. So wanted to get some feedback from all of you on the type of content that is most important. You know, where we should be focused. Um, any other kind of, and also, you know, open to feedback in terms of how I've been communicating. If you think that the, the marketing mailing list is useful, um, if you think that the monthly open meetings are useful, if you'd rather see um, something else happen, we'd love to get your, your thoughts. Note-taking ability right now, huh? Okay. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So is this if you're sitting down with different companies, or even if you're doing presentations and stuff like that? Is okay. Yeah. <laughs> that that's great. The what? I'm sorry. Do you have like oh. Like, if you individually wanted to, like those. Yeah, that that might be something that would you know tie back to what he's asking for, which is you know going into detail on each of the services, and then maybe there we could make the icon as an asset or something. But I, we don't have it broken out that way, but it that could be a project that I think we could do. Mm -hmm. And, and yeah. do you tend to organize it by compute storage and networking, which is what we've, we've been trying to kind of do because, you know, there's so many more than, there's so many projects now and we try to kind of not get into the weeds too much with, you know, project language that, you know, maybe is lost on customers and do something more conceptual like these pillars of, of yeah. Yeah. yeah.
Okay. Cool. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, it's definitely. I mean, it's definitely the the tricky thing about um, trying to simplify concepts is there's always, you know, uh, places where there's a limitation and it's not as accurate as if you went into more detail. And that you know, definitely the object store. Block store is kind of um, one of those examples where when the customer wants to get a little deeper and wants to know more about the nuts and bolts, you need to get into that level of detail. But I think if you have only three boxes, I think these are the right three. <laughs> so it just kind of depends on how. Maybe it's making deep you like an go. icon for each one of those if you want to talk about them separately in another context. But yeah. Have you, are there examples of other landing pages out there that you like that might help us, you know, full, more fully grasp what you're, what you're having in mind? <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, so business value oriented. Yeah, so I would say, um, I guess somewhat recently in the last couple of months, we've been, you know, evolving the messaging we're using in our, our collateral and, and even through the website, although probably the software section is a little just more focused on on the technology, even if it's features and benefits, not overall all business case. But we have been trying to evolve to more of that business value messaging. Um, and honestly, what's what's really helped with that for us, I mean, for me, has been hearing more of these user stories and actually having, you know, real anecdotes or real uh, real feedback that we can start messaging towards. I mean, I think it's really informed our, our marketing efforts and we've been able to evolve that way. So I think that's absolutely what we're, what we're working toward. And maybe it's, you know, getting outside of just like the collateral to having a more dedicated place in the website for that. Uh, so we've, we've talked about before, you know, if you come to our website, should there be different paths for different audiences? And I don't think that, honestly, we're quite ready to to take that on yet, but I think that we can definitely take incremental steps and, and add some of that content along the way. Sure. Help, help me help you, Sandy. Um, yeah, and, and I think even just like some of the users we've heard from today, and we're gonna hear from tomorrow, um, that, like Lauren said, I mean, that's really helping us you know, get, go from sort of the hypothesis of why people are interested in OpenStack or why they're adopting it to some really concrete examples and looking for patterns amongst the different users as to what are the real, like, top three reasons they picked OpenStack. Which is not just about cost. Yeah, I mean, it, yeah. It seems to be agility is the word of the day, I think.
Um, cool. Any other feedback on that? Yes. We do too. That's that's f funny you say that. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. So what we are working on actually is um, like a real time stats page that is updating directly from our databases, and we are testing. Uh, I don't know if y'all have heard of Chartio, but it's a it's a startup out of San Francisco. But they they can help us kind of make pages like that. I think they've done a similar one for the Mozilla community and, and a, a couple different companies. But that way it could just be public and actually through here, you, know, you can always go and access the latest stats. Because I mean, we, we spend our life updating all of these stats for, for different meetings and presentations, and they change every single day. So, um, so we're, I think it's a great point. I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you mean like from uh, from a a com like specifically about your company, how you should be talking about it, or just overall like the health of the community? Okay. Yeah, that's a good is a good point. Mm -hmm. Because it, yeah, I think. Yeah, it's a net. Yeah, I think, and especially with summits, and in any time, it, people are want to sort of have bragging rights around X, Y, Z, and yeah, I would never even do think of something like that. But okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and from the you know just overall community health side, one thing that we've been tracking a lot more is not even just the total number of contributors, which I think we're up over 900 now, um, but the, the average monthly contributors, which you know, have been going up a lot. And I think that shows that really consistent health versus just kind of that, that cumulative number, uh, which actually I just have to call out here. There's another uh, open source project, cloud open source project, stack project that uh, that counts their contributors just by mailing list signups, which we kind of dug into some of their data recently and figured out. So, um, I mean, as far as like, you know, developers really working on the project, I mean, that, that's a huge strength for us um, and something that we definitely want to want to keep talking about. Yeah, and I would just add, just thinking out loud about, you know, metrics that are important. I think a lot of the geographic diversity of our users of, you know, even just the visitors to the website or any, any of the metrics about user groups, you know, that, that's an incredible strength that is, I think, you know, it's a feel-good story. Everybody's excited to work on something that they know people all over the planet are working on. Yeah. 500 million API requests, yeah. Yeah, that is amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This actually brings up another um, area that was further in the slides, but I'll chat about now. Um, so I, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the user committee, but it uh, kicked off with the foundation last September. And right now it's Tim Bell from CERN and Ryan Lane from Wikimedia and uh, JC Martin from eBay. <laughs> And they are, you know, trying to figure out exactly how this uh, organization will self-organize or, or how it'll be represented. But um, and, and really, their purpose is to, you know, build this engaged user community and be able to provide more feedback directly from users in the, into the development process. But as part of their initial research, we helped them create like a user survey, deployment survey, that we ran for about two weeks, uh, starting the end of March through, I guess, right early April. And we had, um, it was kind of, this is our first attempt at it, uh, but we, we built it um, so it was putting, you know, the information directly into our database versus just having like a separate survey. And it's something that the link is still live. I can actually show it to you guys now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's that's yeah. a really good idea, and, and it. Mm-hmm. So, uh, idea. so we ran just like a two week campaign, and we got we found about two hundred unique deployments through that, which they, um, you know, were able. And basically, you know, some of the deployments told us that they absolutely want to be confidential and private, but we can use their information in aggregate, and some of them are. Uh, this is hopefully a way we can discover new users that we can talk about too. Um, but this is still up and it, and it will be up ongoing. And the idea is that we want to do kind of a campaign before each summit to get people to go in and, and update their deployment um, information so we can then pull a new report every six months and have fresh data. So we uh, they presented some of that Monday. And honestly, I don't have all the, the slides. But it's really interesting to see the technology choices, the you know different types of clouds that are out there. Um, I think it's a lot of information that'll be useful to you guys. So we'll be digging into that more and, and definitely sharing it for everyone to to leverage as well. So we just ran like a two week campaign to get initial responses about two weeks before the summit. Um, the user committee actually presented their kind of first pass at the data on Monday. So they have a presentation and, and it's recorded, but um, kind of after the summit, once we've have a little more time, we're going to really dig into it and, and put it into a format that people can can consume and you guys can you know use and, and promote more readily. So, so yeah, it, it's an ongoing survey that will really, you know, we're really looking to get deployment profiles uh, on, on as many deployments as we can indefinitely. But what we did prior to the summit was we just took a two week block of time and said, okay, there'll be a cutoff and then it'll give us the, you know, the user committee time to analyze the data and prepare it. But, but really we want to continue to get people filling this out, um, and, and those their slides are online. I don't have the link handy, but their yeah. slides are online, and their um, session, like you said, was recorded, and that'll be online in a few days. Yeah, but we also want to kind of take a stab at the, the findings, too, and put them together. That's a great point. <laughs> um, but yes, send your customers here if you haven't, <laughs> or if, they, if you know that they haven't filled it out, because they're really trying to track all of this information centrally, and have them be part of the aggregate stats. So, oh. any other questions? Oops. Cedric. So um, that's actually one of the pages in the marketing portal, so it'll be up there soon <laughs> with more information. But for right now, contact me, and I can help you out. Um, yeah, actually, our PR agency is here. <laughs> There's Kevin in the gray sweatshirt um, and Royal over here. Um, but basically, you know, if it's like product news or if you're announcing a customer, then, or if it's someone like joining or sponsoring the foundation, then we'll generally provide a quote for that, you know, something that's beneficial for the community. Um, if it's, you know, we kind of have to do a judgment call in terms of if, you know, the company or organization is really involved, if it's something that we want to put the, the foundation weight behind. But generally, we don't do joint press releases in terms of adding our boilerplate to a different press release. We'll just do a quote and help kind of fact check and make sure you have the most recent information. Um, if that helps. And a lot of times, you know, we have a lot of media relationships and that we can help distribute your news. And we also just have a lot of channels through OpenStack. I mean, we have the bi-monthly newsletter now that uh, Claire helps manage. If you have news, she can distribute it. It goes out to almost 9,000 people at this point. Uh, we have the OpenStack blog. We, you know, can help tweet. So the more that you can give us a heads up about your news and what you're trying to do, we can help, you know, amplify it that day. Beyond just the press release. Anything else? Um, so I was just going to give a heads up on some events that we're working on, and Kathy's welcome to to pitch in too if you want to. Um, but I'm I'm not sure if you guys have been. Right now we have kind of before we have this marketing portal set up, we have a a marketing wiki where you can find. Uh, there's a there's a Google calendar with all the events that we're going to, um, and just different information there for the time being. But um, some of the big ones that we have coming up are structure in June. 
um, and OSCON in July, and then we are sponsoring two Gartner conferences this fall, the, the bigger IT Expo and then the, the Data Center Conference as well. Um, and it, several of these industry events like OSCON and like Gartner, um, we want to have a bigger OpenStack presence there. So we have um, you know, taken out pavilions and kind of split that cost with different companies and sponsors in the communities. I think the OSCON pavilion is sold out, but we'll have like eight pods in a, in a bigger booth. And then we're doing the same thing and looking for partners and sponsors to be part of the, the Gartner event now as well. Um, and then other things that we've done at these different industry events is I think that Cloud Expo last year was actually a really good example, but we created these tabletop signs that said OpenStack to the core and, uh, and I guess like stickers and other giveaways that we could hand out to all of the sponsors at the event that were part of OpenStack, uh, part of the OpenStack community. So instead of just having like one OpenStack booth on the floor at these trade shows, we had OpenStack branding and signage in 20 different booths on the floor. So it just really felt like OpenStack was everywhere. Um, and you know, you felt this much stronger community and it was, it was pretty cool. So that's something we want to continue doing at these different industry events and reaching out to the sponsors beforehand to, to coordinate. And we're definitely open to ideas there too in terms of what else we can, any, what else we can do. Are you gonna have access to the rap song? Yeah. It's actually, <laughs> it's at it's at dopeinstack.com. Yeah, you can go, you can go check it out. <laughs> Feel free. Um, see, see, thought it was fun. A little bit about Hong Kong. So I'm not sure if you all heard the announcement this morning, but um, yeah. Woo! Pretty exciting. We've been promising people for some time now that we are going to move out of the U.S. for for an event. So we did a big search for this fall, and um, we're pretty excited about going to Hong Kong. Um, we are in the very final stages of, of getting this locked down, but it's looking like November 5th through 8th, which is a Tuesday through Friday. Um, we're planning for a much bigger event, um, probably more like four to five thousand people, but um, we're thinking of structuring it just a little bit differently. So that, because um, I mean, obviously we don't want four to 5,000 people in, in breakout sessions and trying to get into the design summit. So we're talking about tiering out the uh, access this time in terms of, of passes, because we don't want to lose kind of the, the core event itself, but also want to you know, give other people that Ladies might be. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for attending day two of OpenStack. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was them back there. I was like, okay, you could have just given me a hand signal. Or Ladies something. and gentlemen, <laughs> continue to talk about marketing. <laughs> um, anyway, so so that's what we're looking at in terms of just you know options for the event. I think something, and you know, we've been talking to a lot of people about these summits that makes it really different than just another cloud industry event is bringing together developers, bringing together the ecosystem, and bringing together the users all into one format, and it really being you know a working event and, the, and keeping the content level very high and um, the passion level very high. So we definitely, you know, we're open to, to feedback. We, we definitely, we know we have a lot to improve with every event that we do. So you know, we're always looking for feedback in terms of uh, how we can continue to, to keep, the, keep it going. Any questions about Hong Kong? Our plan right now, we're kind of scoping out just the the sponsor prospectus and deciding how we we're work, we're working with a local um, agency there. So I don't know if you guys know F and Tech, who is a production company we've been working with in San Diego and here to put on these summits. And then they have a, a local partner in Hong Kong called MCI, who are going to be working with kind of on the street there to get the event executed. And we went over there and met them, and they're really great so we're, we're feeling really good about the show and um is anyone interested in learning about being a sponsor <laughs> at the summit in hong kong good good <laughs> sold <laughs> it's uh, we haven't uh, it's called the asia world expo <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, it's actually near the airport <laughs> there convention center <laughs> Yeah, a little, but it's the only place that's big enough for us <laughs> with, the, with the number of people we have. But there's, a, there's the convention center and there's a hotel that's attached to it as well, which helps us kind of spread out some of the sessions too and hopefully keep the design summit kind of isolated. Have you all liked the design summit this time? Have you walked in there and seen it? 
Yeah. They weren't supposed to walk in there. Lauren, oh. that was the whole idea. <laughs> that was, a, was that a trick question? <laughs> All right. Um, I'll do a shout out for some other events we have going on. I don't know if you guys are familiar with all the different OpenStack days that get organized, but a lot of times, you know, it's a local leader who um, who wants to organize a bigger OpenStack event than just a meetup. And usually they attract, you know, a couple hundred people depending on where they're happening. And um, they'll work with us in terms of helping them kind of get it coordinated and, and branded as an OpenStack event. We have an event policy that's um, on our website as well, just in case you guys are are interested in throwing out, but really the, the intent behind the policy is that any event like this that's branded OpenStack should be a community-focused event, not commercial, not for profit, um, but should, you know, I mean, obviously if you're organizing it and participating, then you, you know, get the benefits of that, but uh, we, we want to make sure that we, you know, have the, the brand facing well to the community. Um, but some of the ones coming up, and if you guys are interested in sponsoring or getting involved or looking for speakers, um, Martin's here, and he's organizing one in Budapest on May 29th. Uh, I think that we might be out there for that. There's an event happening in, in Tel Aviv. Um, I don't know if you know Nadi Shalom at Giga Spaces. He's one of the primary organizers, and that's May 27th. And there's an event in Berlin at Linux Tog. There's going to be an OpenStack Day there on Friday, May 24th. Uh, that's being organized by Florian Haas at Hustexo. So um, I think we might try to, to go out and make the rounds and, and hit those different events uh, late in May. I think you're going to be in Tel Aviv, right, Arthur? Yeah? He's been around to a couple of these events, too. Um, but anyway, so so if you guys want to get involved, we always try to keep these these events on the list, and please contact Kathy or the, the organizers. Any questions about events coming up? No. Sorry, I'll let y'all get out of here. Yeah. Yeah, so right now, there's kind of a, we have a marketing wiki until we get the marketing portal live, but there's a there's a Google Doc with all of these events and that, and that marketing wiki. Yeah. Yes? Oh, cool. Oh. Cool. Oh. What's the date? Of April 26th. April 26th. Who wants to go to Vietnam? That next week. <laughs> Is it today or no? Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh. <laughs> a pitch. Definitely a marketer. And, uh, um, well, I was going to say, you know, a great forum for that is the marketing mailing list. I think I just checked the numbers and we have like 160 maybe. I can't remember what it is. Yeah, something like that. There's like 160 people subscribed to the marketing mailing list now. And if, if you're needing speakers, I mean, I think that's a great place to go put out a message and, and get it out to a lot of different people in the community that might be able to help out. And in, it's good for us to know because we can kind of help get out the word too and, and see what's possible. Yeah. We don't have to do it. I just wanted to make sure there were like 25 <laughs> more slides. There's 25 more slides. Um, <laughs> I'm out of here. Oh, I just I wanted to give you all a quick update. We've been um, doing a lot of research into the different um, analyst relationships that we want to have in terms of paying for, for services, and whether it's reports or some inquiries. Uh, we've just signed up with Forrester in the last couple of weeks, and we're hoping that these are resources that you can leverage as well, um, what we're working with them for. So I uh, wanted to let you know about that. We, again, are you know interested in any kind of feedback there, uh, directions that you think we should go in terms of you know the types of research that would be helpful. I mean, I think that we definitely want to get you know case studies and some kind of industry reports published that, that you guys can leverage as well. Um, let's see what else. That's really about it. The last thing is just making sure that you guys are, are plugged in and signed up. So we do have those monthly open meetings. We 
Um, you know, we just do it over like a, a WebEx type service, so you can sign up. We always post the slides and post the recording, and um, and right now all of that's on the wiki. So please go there, sign up for the marketing mailing list. We announce the meetings and anything else going on on that list. Um, the I think I mentioned the the bi-monthly OpenStack update. Claire's the owner of that, and uh, and like I said, it goes out to like 9,000 people. So. Uh, we try to put company news in there. We put new sponsors and members and also try to have some thoughtful articles. So if you have any ideas there, please let us know. Um, logo program, we didn't really talk about a lot, but we've added a lot more resources to the website about this in terms of if you're, you're branding your product with OpenStack. But um, you can find more resources there or get in touch with us. So I think that's it. Any other questions? We can hang out and chat for a minute. or. Uh, That's a great question. <laughs> um, this is something that we probably failed at before the Grizzly release, or I'll take responsibility for failing at before the Grizzly release, just because we didn't get enough of the materials together in time. But we're actually looking for volunteers to help us with translations. We would like to be able to um, you know, get our core set of materials done earlier and then have them um, have local volunteers, which is what's worked for us in the past, help us with, with translations. And then I'd like to make all those materials available through the portal. So. Um, if you're willing to help, that would be awesome. <laughs> that would be great. Thank you. <laughs> okay, that'll work. And you don't you don't offer tours of downtown Athens either. <laughs> great. Yeah, that's a good yeah, point. Yeah, we, we've actually been thinking about that. I mean, when we first designed it, we had like three, so it was like <laughs> no need. But now we have a lot, and I think we, you know, there are different ways to sort it, and I think we're, we have some ideas about how to, how to do that, cool. which, which helps tell that business value story a little bit, too, that someone was asking about earlier. Well, we'd like to thank all of you. Yeah, thank you thanks too. for sticking with us here after six. Yeah.